welcome. We have a reservation for three. The last name is Pauker. I'm Ben Pauker with The Washington Post. We're in a tiny village on a remote fjord in Norway, heading out to a meal unlike anything else on the planet. We'll need life jackets to get there. Restaurant Iris has only been open since June, but already it's drawn international attention for its food and unusual location. Our first stop is a 130-year-old boathouse, transformed into a chic Scandinavian dining room and prep kitchen. Good evening, everyone. Welcome here to uh, the little island of uh, Snilsvedder. General Manager Nico Danielson and his wife, Chef Annika Madsen, live just up the hill. Straight to the restaurant and uh, the mountains behind us, the sea in front of us. The couple moved to this remote island in March, leaving behind successful careers in Scandinavia's gastronomic capital, Copenhagen. They convinced a handful of kitchen staff and waiters to come with them. Chef Madsen calls herself a city girl, but she says this lifestyle reminds her of Greenland, where her mother grew up. If you get weathered in or ingredients are out of season, you have to adapt and be creative. And I'm sure you're going to be changing the menus for the seasons. We will, definitely. We'll, we'll actually follow the season. So whenever the mushrooms are here, we'll do the mushrooms. It actually is easier for me now rather than in Copenhagen to actually see when to change. And before I was used to call my greensmen and what's going to be on the menu and the fishermen. But here it's a little bit more obvious to me. Our first bite's done, we get back on the boat and head out to our ultimate destination. we finally see where we're heading. It's called Salmon Eye. Inside this floating stainless steel orb is Restaurant Iris. School kids and visitors come here during the day to learn about salmon farming, but at night it transforms into a world-class restaurant. The whole thing looks like something out of a James Bond movie. And so do the waiters. They're charming, but also a little ominous. We need to make it uh, three meters under the water. It's a little narrow. My colleagues will uh, guide you all the way down. That's food hanging from the ceiling. The waiters bring in a dish of sea urchin, and we're told to grab a piece of crispy dried kelp. Iris calls this the expedition. The restaurant serves only 24 people a night, with two staggered seatings. It's a six-hour experience. We leave the moody darkness of the lower level and wind our way up past the kitchen to the dining room and its stunning view of the fjord. Dinner costs roughly $300 a person before the wine pairings. And they call this uh, cuvée a bus, which means buried underground. Inside there's a Norwegian uh, tomatoes, a herb emulsion, and the famous Norwegian hand-dived scallops. We call this dish Feeding the Future. The salmon fry is coated with ground up mushrooms and crickets. Chef Madsen thinks these proteins and powders could be a new way to feed farmed fish. And just outside the window are open water pens containing 700,000 salmon. But in this kitchen, the lowliest ingredients get star billing. Here, lump sucker fish, which are used by salmon farms to eat parasitic lice, are transformed in a beurre blanc sauce. Hot serving with a little piece of uh, poached uh, halibut, um, fished about an hour away north from, uh, from Bergen. It's made from uh, Norwegian cuttlefish, the squid. It's kind of uh, overpopulated and it's pretty uh, invasive. Chef Madsen's cooking is all about finding unusual ingredients and showcasing the bounty of Norway's seasons. She has worked on perfecting this dish for seven years and finding the essence of umami in cuttlefish that looks and tastes more like pasta. So uh, we tried to uh, make this tatar. It's all wrapped up in this uh, little heart made from uh, dried hibiscus flour, dried uh, black currants and tomato. Underneath this crust is raw reindeer. It's a local and environmentally friendly alternative to beef. As the long day turns into night, we move throughout the restaurant, from the rooftop balcony to the lounge and back to the dining room, where it's finally time for all five courses of dessert. 
And inside the mountain you will find some rhubarb sorbet, and in the bottom of the plate you will find a roasted salted uh, oat crumble. Wow. Yeah. I'm going to take this little hill first. The locals sitting near us recognize this immediately. It's shaped like the peaks just outside the window. Somehow, it's almost midnight, and we've got to catch the last ferry home. And just uh, as an uh, service information, I will take you in any car in my boat. Nico races us back to shore. It's been a surreal and amazing evening. For me, I hope they take uh, away an experience of us showcasing the true identity of this area. I hope also they take some personality home. I hope they go home with a bunch of uh, really good stories.